So my research involves gaining a mechanistic insight into how glial cells in the gut contribute to digestion. Um, so digestion really fascinates me. It's a, the intestine is an incredibly complex tissue and um, the environment is always fluctuating. So these cells have to cope with all of these changes and respond, um, yet we really don't know much about their diversity or what they might be doing. The jury selected her because her essay was clearly outstanding. Um, we started reading it and everyone began reading the text and wanted to finish it. So that means it grabbed our attention and at the same time it was backed up by really solid, extremely well done experiments. My research involves applying machine learning to large-scale biological data to identify specific subpopulations of neurons in the central nervous system that are involved in a particular behavior. I work with data produced by a technique called single-cell transcriptomics, which allows scientists to measure the expression of about 20,000 genes across tens of thousands of neurons at once. And the challenge that arises is that it can be very difficult to make sense of biological data at this scale, and powerful computational methods are needed to derive new biological insights from this data. In particular, when I started this research, there was no computational method to identify neurons that were activated during a particular behavior, such as walking, using single-cell transcriptomics. To overcome this challenge, I developed a computational tool named Augur. Augur uses machine learning to identify neurons that are transcriptionally distinct between two experimental conditions, for example, walking or not walking. I worked with a team of neuroscientists to apply Augur to newly collected single cell data from the mouse spinal cord, and we were able to identify a specific subtype of neuron in the spinal cord that enables the recovery of walking after paralysis. The prize honors early career scientists because it's still the case that most awards focus on well-established researchers and senior scientists. But many talented young scientists are doing exciting research and their hard work often goes unrecognized. Eppendorfin Science, on the other hand, want to reward and highlight the work of young talented scientists who are doing exceptional research in neurobiology and are making amazing discoveries already at the very early stage of their careers. So my, my work focuses on emotions and the role of emotions in tagging uh, salient information that we encounter during the day. Uh, emotions are indeed a powerful driving force in our lives, which are able to influence our perceptions, our behaviors, and ultimately our life well-being. During daily life, we encounter different types of events which are able to elicit positive or negative emotions, but how do we effectively manage this influx of information without becoming overwhelmed? Well, the reply might lie in a seemingly unrelated phenomenon, which is sleep. And during my postdoc, I identified for the first time a unique reorganization of the neural circuits in the prefrontal cortex, which is indeed responsible of triaging positive versus negative emotions and to store this information in our brains during the night. So I hope that in the future, my research will help us understand more about how homeostasis is maintained in the gut um, and how the, these glial cells that we know so little about, how they contribute to these different processes. What really motivates me in my research is the joy of discovery. The feeling that I might be the first person in the world to make a particular biological connection or to think about a problem in a certain way or the rush that comes with seeing the first evidence that an idea that I had is going to work, that's a thrill that is hard to beat and something that I think motivates a lot of scientists. In my day-by-day -day work in the lab, um, I think what is uh, really driving, the driving force is uh, surely uh, freedom. The freedom that we have when we wake up in the morning with a new idea, we can just go to the lab, uh, design an experiment, and test this hypothesis of this new idea. And I think this is one of the coolest thing in, uh, in doing research. I think people should enter this prize competition because this is an extremely well-established prize. Everyone in the community knows it. And this will give you some extra kudos. People will remember it for years. And I've seen it very often that it's been put on their CVs and people say, oh, look here, even at an early stage when they were young, they were already recognized by the Eppendorf Prize. My advice to candidates who are considering applying for this award is to go for it. 
Many prospective applicants believe they do not have a chance of winning the Eppendorfin Science Prize. I say, try it. There's no other way to really find out. If you are passionate about your science and have a story to tell, then I encourage you to apply for this award. Another benefit of applying for the Science Prize is that you learn a couple of important things. First, you have to structure your scientific findings. Then you need to pinpoint its importance and relevance. And finally, you learn to successfully express that in a concise way so that others will be able to fully understand it. So even if you don't win the award, you've learned to communicate your science in a compelling and articulate way, which might come in handy on another occasion. So I knew I wanted to submit an entry, and um, I actually had the idea while I was driving my car home from the lab. I took a large drink of water and just, just started thinking about how this feeling when you're swallowing starts to fade, and everything in between your esophagus to your colon, it's kind of a mystery. We know things are moving, but we don't have any control of it, and we can't even actually feel it consciously. Um, so that's how I got the idea. I actually took my phone out, and I voice texted it to myself while I was driving, and I got home and got on my computer and started writing. So.